All right, so number four is an interesting one, which is we've labeled it as like changing assets. So it is getting to your financial independence stage and going, great, I accumulated this wealth through, I don't know, residential property. Now I'm going to move from residential property into like a different asset class, maybe like commercial. Uh, See this commonly with shares as well, like a lot of retirees. I not know. financial advice. Yeah, I'm not allowed to talk about <laughs> shares. Um, I'm just saying I what to- I've seen, I cannot guarantee this works. Do not listen to me. <laughs> Uh, but I will notice that some of the investors I've met with will sell down some of their property and then put into um, shares. Yeah. Because, and th- do you know what's interesting about this one? What? It's largely driven by the idea of not having to deal with maintenance and making things as passive as possible as they get older. Totally. Which is an interesting insight on why they do it. It may or be, may not be right for someone. You would have, you would have seen the guys that, refinanced and used the debt from their property into into that and uh, because that's similar with the changing assets mm, i want to say no on that one. Oh, really where they go and use like a property portfolio yeah so you're um that's not an end game strategy in my mind that's a, a very much a strategy of like different growth so that's like using equity to buy another house right? it's similar but it's not yeah so better. and in doing what you've suggested there is like you've actually created more debt because you've, you've attempted to uh, refinance to then take money out and put it into the share market in a, in a different way. Now, as for an end game, that is significantly increasing risk because now it, you have totally. share market risk as well. So totally. I haven't actually seen anyone execute as that an as, end a, game. as an end game strategy. That's fair. That's fair. As a strategy, yes, but as an end game. No, that's a fair observation. As a growth strategy, absolutely. That's to the point, taking equity to buy more, more assets. Totally. So this... The interesting thing around the changing assets approach is also that you can go whichever way you want, like to your point of whether you go from residential property to shares, whether you go from commercial across to residential property, whether you go residential to commercial, the concept is more that you're essentially you're building a foundational base that will help you with your end game. So in this, maybe you believe that residential property will grow best over the next 10, 20, 30 years, but then you go commercial property has got better yield or cash flow. I'm going to use the growth over 20, 30 years, sell and migrate across into commercial because I want the cash flow for my financial independence. Completely. If you Let's say you've got 10 million in property of residential and that yields 3%, 4%, which if you had Melbourne and Sydney properties, could be. Yep. Right. If you were to sell down that uh, portfolio and move that same capital, even after tax, right? So let's say you had 10 million uh, resi. And you uh, sold it all down, did everything else, and you're left with seven and a half. You pay 25% tax on it, which you probably wouldn't, but let's just pretend. Um, the idea behind that is that you could then put seven and a half mil into commercial that might yield nine or 10%. Yeah. And that would be the differential there. And again, it's just making sure that you're aware of it, not getting to financial independence going, oh, what am I going to do now? <laughs> because you could totally see how you get pigeonholed into forced onto one of these end games or two of these end games based on what you've bought. Imagine getting a whole heap of residential property uh, to a point where you're like, oh, now I can totally like pivot into commercial, but then realize that commercial is fundamentally changed and you've got no other choice. And you're like, but hang on, wait, 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 what? <laughs> that was the end, only end game I was going for. Right, this is where it gets even more interesting. So, and, and this is why I find it so fascinating is the sell down strategy could completely work. Right, the buy and hold strategy can completely work, but then the uh, changing assets can completely work. But the interesting thing here is that you might look at this and go, well, instead of buying more resi, I should actually buy a commercial asset with some debt earlier in my journey. So that can be a part of a buy and hold hold. rather than having to transition and sell something at this point. Both can work, but you've got to decide how you want to play it in that way the deliberate decisions as you're accumulating your assets or pivoting based on where you're getting to as well. Because you might not want to deal with, like you, in hindsight, in my 30s, I sit there and go, changing assets, Charlie? Sounds great. Well, I'm happy to sell down and then get a commer- commercial. Maybe I'll do some improvements and stuff. But then by the time I hit, what, like 40, 50, 60, whatever that financial independence is, I'm like, I can't be bothered dealing with that. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want to deal with like selling houses and finding a commercial property. That's what I find so interesting about the um, retirees I know. It's like, I put it out this way. It's like, I feel, I feel, and this is a feel thing, 
they just want a, a 5% fully frank dividend. They yes. actually don't care at all no. about the share performance of the com- company. They just want that index fund, 5% on average, like some protection against inflation with a little bit of growth. But at the end of the day, that's what they're there it's, for. They want no they, maintenance, no hassle, want the money in my account. I don't want to know about the tenants and what fucking door they've broken. <laughs> it may as well be a bank account with a high interest rate. Like that's what they're Exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's what bonds were like once upon a time. <laughs> the rebirth. Well, we've we've been in a very interesting environment where you couldn't get yields uh, like that. But maybe that was. And again, if again, I'm not a financial advisor or anything. But at different times, I suspect bonds would have been valued differently for retirees. Yeah. You got another ring game. Yeah, we we actually kind of got we got another one, and then like one little special one on the end here. But the last one I know here. Uh, this is a, the most dangerous of the ones I've spoken about from us speaking about because we are not qualified to give financial advice on this topic and probably shouldn't even bring it up. But I know of people where they elect to basically pump their super. So rather than paying down property and rather than electing to do some of the other strategies they've looked at here, their whole idea is I'm going to max my super fund and then utilize my super to pay down property or live off my super to give my property more time to compound. So it's an intentional strategy to invest less in property along the way and more in super so that their superannuation can do some heavy lifting towards the end. And that the interesting thing around that is that because superannuation kicks in when you're 60, 65, depending, and you are expecting that you will live to that point or financial independence will potentially trigger in at that point. And so, albeit it could be a great end game, it's just understanding what details sit underneath that. Because for me, I'm pushing financial independence well before super will kick in or even help me with my uh, property portfolio. So I can completely appreciate it, but understanding that that's what you're going up against which is like this will only really start helping you out in the later years. You've got to make sure that you've got a lot of stuff triggering off before that end game, just as a caveat or a consideration anyway. Com- completely. And it's also the thing I find most interesting, and I'll say interesting, is that you would in- intentionally elect not to invest more in property. You would intentionally go, do you know what? I could buy another property, but instead I'm going to pump my super. So I'm going to end up with less property overall but more super yeah, and that would be the way to do it. So it's like you would have to be very, very firm on what you're doing as a strategy yourself because otherwise it would seem counterintuitive. Totally. And I know there is a whole heap of investment vehicles and stuff and again, not financial advice where you can buy property and you self-managed super fund and all those kind of things, which is how people sort of offset this because they can still look at it saying, well, I've got property in super and I'm investing out of super and my contributions into super are just larger so that I can go and get it. Um, and so that's one of the ways that they look at being able to kind of double dip in that sense of, while well, I'm still in the property game. I'm just in the property game out of super and I'm in the property game in super and it's just going to help me out at the end. This is even more to the point of like you, so I've mentioned the idea of like utilizing super to like pay off debt outside of super at another point but even to there is like you could do property in super as a part of your in game strategy because it's taxed differently completely or you could make it a diversification strategy and and do other things and i say could i i think super is a topic i know enough about to be dangerous not enough to be uh helpful but i think it's something someone everyone should be exploring with a qualified financial planner and make sure it's in there in some way but to the point if you're planning on retiring at 40 you may want to consider what assets you have outside of super and can access versus inside of super because that time horizon could be the make or break on this. All right, fellow property investor, if you loved the value from this short video and wanted to know more about how you can win at property investing, check out the full episode by clicking the link on your screen or in the description right now. Alternatively, click subscribe and you'll never miss another one of these videos.